But joining us this afternoon on the show, we have Rajat Bose uh, on the technicals and Parthiv Shah uh, of Tracom Stock Brokers to uh, answer all of the fundamental questions that you have. Well, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Rajat, let's start with you. How would you approach today's trading session? The advanced decline ratio is negative. The Nifty is down around 100 points plus. Well, like that, uh, good afternoon and good afternoon to you, Parthiv. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, what I would say about the index is that uh, index is now in a range-bound situation. It needs to go, Nifty needs to go above 25,300 to acquire fresh gums up. On the other hand, even if it were to fall, it is not falling uh, below or it is not conquering the range uh, between, say, 25,080 to about 24,980. So this 100-point range from 25,080 to about 24,980, unless that is decisively broken on the downside, you won't see much of a much of a bear pressure. On the other hand, once it manages to get past 25,300 decisively, you might see a good swing up to about 25,422. But this range-bound situation is likely to continue for a couple of more sessions. Maybe after that, some resolution might really happen uh, in our market. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, well, we do have our query, first query on the show. We have Rajendra Nayak, who writes to us from Hyderabad, holds 2,000 shares of Z Entertainment, which he's bought at around 151. He wants to know what to do, whether he should hold or sell this particular counter. That stock has given, uh, you know, negative returns of around 50% this year. It's been under turmoil in terms of the stock performance. Uh, Parthiv, your view on Z Entertainment fundamentally and what would you recommend on this? Good afternoon, Ekta and Rajadna. See, I think, uh, Ekta, very frankly, uh, no to say about it that Z is, a, as a brand, is a very, very strong brand. But unfortunately, we know so far what has uh, transpired with the company all starting with the Sony merger post, which I think a lot of issues the company faced. And uh, also, if you look into the balance sheet integrities, I think uh, the inventories that the company is sitting on of the production, you know, that is something which uh, always spooks the investors. And that is where, you know, the merger with Sony was uh, going to play a very important role because that was going to make the company, you know, relatively cash rich because Sony is bringing in a lot of cash. Now that the street is aware of the fact that that's not happening, I think a lot of uncertainty lies for this company. Uh, and I think uh, investor is better off, you know, to select some other media stock rather than stay put with Z. And also just to note, uh, you know, they had some sort of extension in terms of holding their annual general meeting. So I think there are some uncertainties uh, lying for this pocket. So better to avoid Z entertainment at this juncture. Okay, all right. Uh, well, we do have some global news coming in where China is mulling cutting mortgage rates in two steps to shield banks. So maybe there is some fear with regards to what's uh, taking place in terms of the banks there. But just watch out for this. This is the Bloomberg uh, flash which is coming through in a two-step uh, move to shield banks within the country. But um, we'll probably try and pull up, um, you know, the European markets uh, to see an assessment of, or to see any kind of impact on that and whether there would be any impact in terms of the U.S. futures as well on account of this particular piece of news. But um, in any case, uh, Z Entertainment, weak technicals, uh, it seems like that. Uh, Rajat? Well, the point is that, uh, again, it is in a range-bound situation for... Uh, uh, several months, uh, if you look at the weekly chart, that shows that unless 125 is taken out on the downside, it's not falling further. At, at the same time, till such time it crosses 185, there would not be much of a rise. In fact, uh, crossing 185 is a far cry now. I mean, uh, uh, 165 is going to give a lot of resistance to this stock. So, uh, I would I would agree with Parthiv that it is better to avoid this stock now and uh, get into something else, move out of it and go, in, go into something else. I would not say that you have to get into media. There are other places also where you can buy. Okay, what are these other places, Rajat? I would recommend a, uh, rec recommend a stock that has been languishing for quite some time. Now it has started moving up. I would recommend the blue chip 
Asian pains. Asian pains has started moving up and in, uh, even crude prices have come down. So raw material costs will be lower. Asian pains chart suggests that there is a saucer pattern and it is likely to move up from the current levels to about say five to 6%. Uh, 4,500, 4,600, uh, definitely likely. Uh, uh, this is one stock that you can get in as well as you can look at Barger, but I would prefer Asian Pains. That's my preference. Okay, all right. Uh, but uh, there are, you know, fears of competition. Parthiv, how would you approach Asian Pains? There are fears that, you know, there's competition, which is probably going to dent their market share formidably. The stock has not done much year to date. Yeah, if you see, I think uh, the fierce competitive intensity coming from Grasset, I think uh, the street is uh, slightly worried on that front. But if you look at uh, the previous two quarter commentaries of Asian Pains, I think they are not uh, particularly spooked with this because I think even with the 10,000 crore and now, you know, upping the capex of 20,000 crore announced by Grasset for the paint industry over the next five years, uh, they will have substantial capacity, no two ways about it. And based on the gross block uh, calculation, they will be number two in this industry. But I think still Asian paint will re retain the market leadership. And the concern will be more for the current number two, number three, number four players because they are the ones who will not be able to match up with uh, Grassland's capex intensity and the distribution dealership network. So that is where the problem will lie. But our sense is that, you know, Asian Paints has time corrected for long. And now the valuations have become relatively uh, reasonable versus its uh, previous historical highs where the valuations were 20% more than what it is right now. And probably one is expecting a very good H2 in the entire paint sector with, you know, the rural recovery coming back post monsoon i think repainting of the houses that is where probably asian paints will show volume growth and which is where i think the stock is trying to factor in of that uh, from the levels of 2850 that it touched recently and we believe that i think uh, I, I agree with rajita that you know there is upside in asian paints from okay all right uh, well on that note we need to take a short break but a lot more queries on the other side stay tuned Welcome back. You're still tuned with us, uh, tuned into your stocks on CNBC TV 18. We have Rajat Bose as well as Parthiv Shah to answer all of your queries. Uh, well, let's get going on one more question that we have. Prakash Hardi writes to us from Mumbai. He holds 500 shares of Bharat Electronics, which is bought at around three, uh, triple, triple three, which is 333 odd rupees. He wants to know what to do. He's currently sitting on a loss. He wants to know whether to book his losses. Uh, well, um, interesting uh, one there, considering that all these stocks are in focus on account of, you know, the possible defense opportunity which is arising and plus it's a PSU. From that context, uh, Parthiv, what would your approach be? Do you think one should probably just hold on and wait until a lot of these opportunities such as, um, you know, the Defense Acquisition Council approving those 10 capital acquisition proposals, etc., come through and start reflecting on these balance sheets? Yes, absolutely. I would suggest a hold. Uh, no doubt. I think historically, if you see, Bharat Electronics used to enjoy, you know, a valuation of around 18 times, 20 times for quite some time. And of late, since the last two, three budgets that we have seen that the government up, upped its ante on defense spending and a lot of, you know, announcements besides the budget also coming up, uh, we find Bharat Electronics really attractive. One of the primary reasons being that unlike many of its other listed PSU peers where valuations are even more expensive than what Bharat Electronics is quoting at, Bharat Electronics is a diversified conglomerate where I think uh, the mandate is not to just uh, focus on one single vertical. In terms of electronics for defense, I think it caters to multiple things, things like radar, multi-technology systems, uh, control systems, uh, a lot of equipment from Bharat Electronics goes into tanks, avionics, uh, uh, things like that. So I think that really helps the business model. More importantly, Bharat Electronics is also forwarded into space-related technology where going ahead one is expecting very good orders. And current order book is set at around 65,000 crores and almost 20 to 25,000 crore worth of orders are still in the pipeline. So execution has improved over time margins have stayed stable we believe that you know the investor should stay put in this stock for at least next three to five years okay all right and uh, what about you uh, rajat you know 100 percent plus returns in the past 12 months uh, what would you recommend do you think that it'll probably get back to those levels of over 300 odd rupees and technically is it showing some strength 
See, technically, it is showing some distribution. Actually, unless uh, it falls below 280, I wouldn't say that one should exit. But then 280 should be used as a stop loss. See, the point is that well, whatever Parthiv is saying, I'm fully in agreement. And I, I would say that it is a great company. But is it a great stock at the moment? Because if you go by the sayings of Anthony Bolton, the legendary fund manager from Fidelity, Whenever any stock was uh, shown to him, he would say that how much of it is already in the price. So I suppose a lot of it is already in the price. So there could be some sideways movement. But if one has purchased at a lower level, much lower level, then continue. But if you have purchased uh, only recently, then you should better use the 280 stop loss because there is a possibility that in... Uh, uh, trying to consolidate, say, consolidation like Asian Pens or, uh, say, SRF did after a parabolic rise uh, several, a few years back, the same thing could happen here. So it is better that you use the 280 stop loss. And if, you have, if at all you are buying a fresh, then wait. Uh, there will be lower prices when you can get it. Okay, all right. Uh, well, uh, we do have some news which is source-based where Sona BLW is in talks to acquire a rail engineering business of Escort Kubota. So do watch out for that. Uh, there could be some amount of m &E, uh, brewing there. Sona BLW could be looking to launch around a 2000 Raw QIP soon. Any thoughts quickly, Parthiv, on this? Yes, uh, ever since uh, Kubota had uh, acquired stake from the Nandas of ex Escort, I think they had been very vocal that they would focus on not only domestic but global business of tractors and hive off the uh, non-core railway business. And I think if uh, Sona BLW is in the foray, I think that makes very good strategic sense. Uh, their uh, execution, especially in the EV segment of the vehicles in terms of the motor terrain was extremely good. And we believe that this management has the bandwidth to kind of, you know, scale up this line of business, which otherwise Kubota was not able to scale up. Okay, all right. We now have Kumar Sen who writes to us from New Delhi. He bought 4,000 shares of landmark cars. For a price of around 604, he wants to know the future prospects of this particular investment. So he's sitting on a profit on this one. Uh, what's your perspective on this, Rajat? See, this stock is uh, actually showing an inverted saucer pattern. That is, and it has already come down from the peak of 8, uh, 880 to current levels of around 600. It went down further, went further down. If you look at the business model, I don't, uh, I'm not really too excited about it because uh, it is it is into financing old cars and uh, and also those people like Mercedes dealers and others when they sell, uh, if you have a new uh, old car, they will uh, exchange for it and then this landmark comes in there. Uh, see, it has been going down. The prices and the price activity clearly tells that people are not that enthused about this. So I would suggest getting out of it and going to something else because this is not really exciting. If you study the fundamentals, at least I didn't find that great ex excitement. Of course, it, uh, it has marquee investors like Goldman Sachs as well as some Indian uh, mutual funds also. But that, that doesn't cut much ice when you look at the fundamentals. Okay, and quickly, your view on this one, um, Parthiv, landmark cars? See, the story about uh, premiumization in terms of the Mark agency and the BYD agency that they have and rest of the other agencies, which is m and Jeep, Honda. But I think the key focus is on these two luxury brands. Our sense is that, you know, going ahead, we might see sales slow down in these two uh, categories and especially the luxury car category because already we had seen a super cycle post COVID and uh, there are already signs of this tapering off. And I think the key important vertical for this company is also the after sales business, which comes with higher OC and better margins. But that's not uh, particularly scaled up at an intensity where they've been selling cars. So that is where the return ratios have been kind of uh, lackluster. So I would avoid this counter at this point. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, on that note, Parthiv, as well as Rajat, we're going to wrap up. Thanks very much for joining in and taking us through your perspective on multiple stocks. It's a wrap on your stocks. Stay tuned. Closing bell just after a short break. <laughs>